Hi, this is Anise Matthew, and welcome to episode 42 of the Mandala of Life, 365 Days to Self-Discovery. Today, we're moving away from collective abstract energy back to tribal energy, away from mindset and the clarity that comes with awareness to the awareness that comes with the bonding strategy of mating and reproducing. This energy is about being open or close to intimacy. As Ra Uruhu said, the possibility of awareness in this gate could transform the nature of all humanity's intimacy. This can be the gate of conflict or resolution, and it's all about who you let into your personal space and who you don't. As soon as we move into tribal energy, we know that it's going to be something related to the mundane aspects of life, especially how we survive as a human race. Here, it's all about how we reproduce and have more offspring. The gate six is part of the defense circuit, a minor circuit. And yet, just because it's minor doesn't mean that it doesn't have a lot of power. This is somebody who has a penetrating aura and will break into orc space wherever you go, even if you're not trying to. It's an energetic that tells people that you're there. This gate has everything to do with the pH in the body and is also considered the diaphragm of the emotional system. In other words, it allows people in or keeps them out. While the gate 59 can be our bonding strategy, it's the gate six that decides ultimately if you want to have intimacy or not. This gate is also considered a very important gate in that it is the place where all emotional streams are generated. And when connected with the 59.6, connects two very powerful motors in the human design body graph. This is also considered a gate of fusion that fuses feelings, moods, and also sensitivity. As with all gates of the emotional system, there is no truth in the now. Only after the wave has gone through its cycle can we really know what the truth is and also find the awareness. Even though there's no awareness in the moment, there can be a tremendous amount of awareness over time and through the wave. But before we get into new content, let's quickly go over what we talked about in our last episode. In our last episode, we talked about the gate 47 and how it's half of the channel, the 6447, and that it is the awareness that comes after we've had big downloads about our past or even super consciousness. It is connected to the gate 64 where all the downloads occur, but only after the gate 47 is activated do we get the awareness that we want, which tells us exactly what it all meant. It also deciphers the information and filters it so that we can get the clarity that we've been looking for. This is where we we can get realizations and aha moments. This energy says that when we wait for universal timing, the clarity will come. While we wait, being active and living life can help to release us from the oppression that can sometimes come when we feel that we don't have the clarity or we feel oppressed by life or our mindset shifts in a way that we're looking for not good things to happen instead of good things. And when we see the beauty in our lives and in the world around us, we open a door for more good things to come into our life. This can be where our mindset can literally shift our reality. And if you want to find out more about the gate 47, please check out episode 41 of the Mandala of Life. With that said, let's get into some new content. And please don't forget to check out the other episodes of the Mandala of Life. Since the sacral is the most powerful energy of all the body graph, we know that anything that's connected to it is going to have some level of power, especially the defense circuit, where the energy is all about how we reproduce and also how we rear and take care of our offspring so that they can be viable contributors to the human race. This is where we have borders and boundaries. And this could be where we're distrusting people who are not of our tribe because this is tribal energy. This can be the energy of diplomacy or it can be the energy of wanting to have conflict or the concept that you want to sweep conflict away and pretend that everything's okay. This can be about people pleasing so that everything is peaceful. And this can be stepping into the shoes of somebody else so that you can understand exactly how they're feeling. This is also called the gate of friction, which means that many times when we're talking about conflict resolution, we do have some friction before we get all the details so that everybody is on the same page. In other words, the resolution may not come easy because it's about compromise and everybody has to agree on how they want to compromise to get the resolution in place. This can be the energy of going out to work, even if it's something that you don't like to do, but to support your tribe you're willing to make the sacrifice. Although this isn't a role gate, it is a profiling gate, which means that it speaks to a strategy of how our emotional energy is open or closed to intimacy. This is the eighth gate of the quarter of duality, where purpose is fulfilled through bonding. 
The Gate 6 is half of the Channel 59 6, and this is all about intimacy of all forms. Now, when we talk about the Gate 59, I did a full video on that, and that is all about the strategies for intimacy related to the profile lines. It's considered a roll gate. Now, the Gate 6 is not considered a roll gate. It's considered a profiling gate, or in other words, it has some connection to the emotional strategies related to the profiles. Now, the profiles that we're talking about, the lines, are both lines. So you can look at the profile lines of both your design and personality and read into the emotional connection of how it actually opens or closes to intimacy. So if we look at the gate 59 as the intimacy or the strategy for intimacy, the gate six says yes or no. And that's ultimately what we're talking about. And it also comes in a wave because the gate six is part of the emotional system or the solar plexus, which is an awareness center. And we know that the solar plexus is an awareness center that has a connection to a wave or an emotional wave. And that only when you've gone through your full wave, can you really understand what the truth and clarity is for you. Now, even if you don't have a defined emotional center, this emotional strategy of the gate six still is in play in that there's a duality in actually how the strategy is working. The whole channel, the 59.6 is tribal emotional energy. And I did a full video on that. And I'll leave the link below if you're interested in finding out more about how it works emotionally. And as I said, this is part of the minor circuit of the defense circuit, which means that when you carry all or part of this energy, your aura can be very penetrating and get noticed wherever you go. The gate six can be called the gate of the builder of form, and it's about creating boundaries that can be open or closed. And because it's part of an awareness center, the solar plexus, that means there's nervousness or fear found within this energy. The fear here is related to intimacy and whether you should be open or closed to and the key to working through this energy or this nervousness is related to the emotional response strategy that is connected to the intimacy strategy of the gate 59. And right now I'll go through each profile line and also their strategy. I'm going to go through each profile as I did when I did the gate 59. And to keep in mind that you can look at your personality profile line and that would be the first line in your profile. And that would be connected to your emotional response to sexual or intimacy strategies of the gate 59. Of course, if you have that particular gate, you can check it out as well and see what the line is to see how it can kind of mingle with the actual profile as well. The profile is more of an instinctive thing, especially with the tribal energy. So it can be stronger in its expression, but ultimately you're the judge of how it works for you. The key to remember is that if you're living your strategy and authority, the theory is that you'll naturally have this emotional response to intimacy strategies of the gate 59. So let's begin with the profiles 1, 3 and 1, 4. So we know that there's going to be a duality in every one of the strategies that we're going to talk about because that is connected to the emotional wave. Even if you don't have an emotional wave, that's the way the bonding strategy presents. Instinct is part of the way that the emotional response is connected for how you accept or reject intimacy. And here it's about weakness and strength. And when we're talking about weakness and strength, we're really talking about this idea that as with all first line energies or first line themes, we need a foundation of knowing the information so that you can feel secure in an intimate connection, which means that if the security of having the right information and that foundation of knowledge is not there, you will probably not want to have an emotional intimacy with somebody or a connection. You will not be open to it. But as soon as you have that intel or the information that you feel is necessary to know to have that intimate connection, then that is when you will have that point of strength where you're able to go out and open yourself to the intimacy, to be open to the bonding strategy that connects to the first line. When we get to the second line, we're talking about profiles 2, 4, and 2, 5. And this is about instinctive energy, or you go on instinct. And this is related to advance and withdrawal. Whenever we get to the second line energy, we know that this is a line of the natural, or it is a line of talent, but it's also a line where you're called out. And that's how it works best for you. Which means that if you're called out or somebody wants to become intimate with you, then that means that you have an ability to advance, which means you go and go out on a date with them or you have some intimate connection with them. That means you're open. And then if you withdraw, that means you're not 
not open to intimacy. So again, it's a duality. You're either open or you're closed. And that's how all these bonding emotional energies work in that they have an opening in a closing perspective. So this means that when you are called out and it's something you want, you can advance. But if it's not something that you want, then you can withdraw. The key here is not to rush out based on inspiration because it may not necessarily work out in an intimate connection for you as you had hoped for. The withdrawal can also be this idea that it takes some time for somebody with a second line or the line of the hermit to actually take somebody into their space or to become intimate with them because it is all about this unnaturalness to have another person coming into your space because naturally this is about wanting to be a hermit, wanting to be alone. So that is why we have the advance and we have the withdrawal. And the withdrawal is important for a hermit because they need their time away from people as much as they need their time with people. When we get to the third line, we're talking about the profiles 3, 5, and 3, 6. When we get to the third line, we're always talking about mutative energy. And when you get to the third line of the gate 6, we are talking about a very fertile energy as well. And usually when this energy can come together with a gate 59, there's potential for a lot of fertility. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's just to have children. It can be fertility in projects anything that is coming into being, anything that is being created. There's potential to want to have intimate connections with people who have something that is foreign to you, something that is not of your same culture, genetically different, a genetic pool that it's quite different than yours type of thing. And that's where we know that there is this idea of needing to have mutation or new blood in the tribe, you could say. And that's where the line three is mutative. This is called alliance and disconnection. So what this means is that when you have the third line energy, there's a need to have a disconnect from a relationship as much as there's a need to have a connect. Again, we're talking about duality where we have something that you're coming together with somebody and then you're coming apart from somebody. It doesn't sound like a good thing, but ultimately what it means is that having your own space and having this ability to come away from a relationship, even for a temporary amount of time, and and then reconnecting is very healthy for anybody with a third line energy. That means something as simple as having your own space that you can get away from the person that you are intimate with. It also means that you need to get out of somebody's aura so that you can sort of recharge yourself and be in your own space so that later you can go back and be with that person again. When we get to the fourth line, we're talking about the profiles 4-6 and also 4-1. And this is all about social connections, as we always know. It's always the line of the opportunist, which means that the intimacy, emotional energy is related to somebody who's in your social group. Friendship is always essential before you move on to a more intimate connection. This is always about the right people and the right opportunities going hand in hand. This energy is about being accepted for exactly who you are. Being very fixed is part of the energy of the fourth line. The fixedness of the fourth line is the influence of the fourth line because when you stick to your themes and people like those themes, then that's when things will work out. And when the themes that you carry with you and your fixed nature are not connecting with somebody else, then that intimate connection is not going to be somebody for you. It's all about being exactly who you are, having the fixed nature that you have, and those who are accepting of it are your people or your social group, and all the rest are outside of your social group. So there's a duality of the people that are in your social circle and the people that are outside of your social circle. And because the person that you're going to be intimate with is usually within your social group, then that means you know more information about them as well, which speaks to the foundation of friendship before intimacy with your particular profile. The key to remember is that the secret to a long-lasting relationship is always about friendship first. When we get to the fifth line or the profiles 5-2 and 5-1, and we know that any fifth line energy is always going to be about projection. In other words, that you are in a projection field where people are looking at you and expecting something from you specifically. When you're in the correct projection field, that means that what you have to offer is exactly what people expect from you as well. When you're not in the correct projection field, then that's when people expect things from you that are not true to who you are. This is also the energy of universalization or this ability to give a practical expression of things that are important to the world. And what you have to give is specific to exactly who you are. As much as it's easy to 
connect or make relationships happen when you have the fifth line energy because it's such a projected energy. Actually knowing what to do when a relationship has happened can sometimes be something that you need to take some time alone to be with the energy, to be with your process and kind of figure out what the relationship means to you and also what the practicality of the relationship can be in your life. And that's the key with the energy of the profile line five. It is about this practical expression of exactly what the relationship means for you. Also understanding if you are in the correct projection field so that everybody's on the same page and there's no unexpected projection for things that are not part of exactly who you are. When we get to the sixth line, we're talking about the profile 6-2 and also 6-3. And this is related to the standards that we set for ourselves and for others. And many times with the sixth line energy, there's this seeking of perfection and also a wisdom that can come after a person has gone through the three stages of the development of the sixth line. This energy says that bonding comes with no rules other than you are being exactly who you are within the relationship and you're allowing other people to be exactly who they are. And when that happens, there's no disharmony. Everything is connected and people can be who they are and the relationship can be as it is. This says that all life is sacred and that everybody has a right to be who they are. So it's being open to being your authentic self and to potentially be closed when you have to conform to somebody else's ideals and not be able to be exactly who you are. The bottom line is, is that when we are allowing other people to be who they are and we're being exactly who we are, and conflict is never something that needs to happen. When we've learned the emotional strategies that allow us to be open or closed to intimacy, then the mandala of life turns again and we move into the energy of serendipity. This is the gate 46, the gate of pushing upward, the gate of the determination of the self, where being in the flow of life can have magical results. Well, that's all for now, and I'll be back soon with episode 43, the gate 46, the gate of the love of the body. Until then, take care, and I'll see you again soon.